Hi folks, are these little portable antennas that you can get off eBay and various other places much good? Let's see. If you're just starting out in the hobby, uh, this type of whip antenna uh, may seem an ideal solution if you're about to go out portable. After all, it uh, is small and compact uh, when it's collapsed and even when it's extended, it's not that long and uh, they're usually monoband. Uh, this particular one is designed for 20 meters, uh, although you can get uh, some mo very much more expensive types that uh, cover more than one band. I think Elecraft does one. Uh, they're a compromise, and the compromise comes in the fact that the radiating part of the, of the uh, antenna is very short compared to the wavelength. Uh, it's trying to emulate a quarter wave on 20 meters, so it should uh, be 5 meters long, but it's only about 1.3 meters long. And most of the radiation is likely to come from the bottom part of the antenna, which is the loading coil. And much depends on the efficiency of the loading coil as to how well this will actually work. Unfortunately, this particular antenna, we have no idea how the loading coil is constructed. So really the only way we can test it is by uh, putting it on the air and, and see if we can make contacts with it, which obviously is not a terribly scientific way of, of testing whether the antenna works. Of course, all antennas work to some extent, so I have no doubt that uh, this antenna will radiate. Uh, the question is whether the compromise between the reduced radiation due to the very short antenna uh, is worth it when you consider the, uh, the, the sort of utility of the antenna itself. This type of antenna can be used in a number of different ways and uh, one possibility uh, is to use it on, on your radio a bit like a walkie-talkie and the Elecraft KX2 does actually uh, support that, it's got a built-in microphone so you can actually use it as a kind of walkie-talkie system. Uh, not sure how well it'll work, maybe I'll try that out uh, later on. Uh, ideally when you're using this type of antenna you want some sort of counterpoise wire, uh, a bit of wire on the ground and as with all snake oil antennas uh, the more wire you have out on the ground the, uh, the better they tend to work because uh, that contributes to some of the radiation. Uh, that really leads to one of the problems with this type of antenna and that is that the whole setup uh, that you're using uh, becomes live. It, it's all transmitting, so uh, you, you're part of the antenna yourself as well. That also means that the SWR is likely to change as you move around, um, which is something to bear in mind with this type of antenna. When you do use this type of antenna, it's important that you don't use the internal tuner in your radio. What you want, need to do is to adjust the tuning uh, by altering the length of the antenna. Uh, if you use the internal tuner in the radio, then uh, you're going to end up with a very bad mismatch here and uh, things are probably not going to work out particularly well for you. So it's important to turn off the internal tuner in your radio and then uh, adjust the match by changing the length of the antenna. Another option for using the antenna if you want a more sort of tabletop setup uh, is to use a right angle connector on your radio and uh, then you'll have the antenna sitting like that. Uh, but bear in mind that the, uh, a lot of strain is going to be placed on the, uh, on the antenna connector. Uh, that's why the Elecraft uh, antenna has some little legs that uh, try to do some strain relief. Um, so you, you need, do need to bear in mind that that, that, that is a p potential problem with this type of mounting system. A third possible way to use this antenna is to use a, a small mag mount. And that's what I'm going to do in, the, in this situation when I do some tests with it. Uh, the mag mount needs to be attached to something reasonably substantial which uh, gives some sort of a ground return. Uh, it's never going to be as efficient as having a, a proper radial system. But you can in fact uh, attach a, a radial system to the antenna if I just move in closely here. Um, by stripping some wire and twisting it around here then you, you can attach a radial. And I'm probably going to do that in this case uh, just to add a bit of extra wire into the system. I've now attached the, uh, the radial uh, or counterpoise to the antenna. You see it's just twisted round so that it makes a good uh, connection with the body of the antenna. The reason I'm doing that is that this type of mount uh, works uh, by, by having using capacitance between the base of the, uh, the mount and the surface that you're going to mount it on. 
uh, to give that sort of earth return connection as it were and this uh, mount is very small and on 20 meters the capacitors uh, going to be cast capacitance is going to be insignificant uh, for best performance with a mag mount you usually need to mount it on something uh, substantial and metal uh, rooting around in my rucksack uh, I found I had brought with me an old uh, kitchen sink uh, but the bad news is, and uh, this is a bit of bad planning on my part, that it turns out not to be magnetic, uh, which was a great shame. So I'm going to uh, have to go back to the, uh, the item that I used previously, which is a pheasant feeder. I should uh, perhaps add that the, uh, the thing that you attach it to doesn't need to be magnetic to make the antenna work in, in any particular way, shape or form. Uh, it needs to be metal, a conductor of some sort, ideally, but uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be magnetic. Uh, however, uh, if you do use something magnetic, the whole, si the whole system is going to be a whole lot more stable uh, because once you extend the antenna, it's likely to fall over if it's not stuck firmly. In a system like this, uh, whatever you attach to your radio that's a conductor becomes part of the antenna system. So it's important that when you're doing the tuning of the antenna itself to actually make sure that you've got everything connected. So I've connected my Morse key, I've connected my power supply, which as you can see has a, a long lead to it attached to it. And obviously the coax is attached to the radio. Uh, now what we want to do is to uh, adjust the length of the antenna itself uh, for a best match. And we first we'll do that just by receiving and, and see how that works. Before doing any tests with an antenna of this sort, it is important to make sure that the tuner in your radio is bypassed. You don't want the tuner in circuit. And now hopefully uh, I'm going to be here able to hear some band noise. Yes. If I hold the antenna uh, with my hand, it detunes it and I can just hear a bit of a drop in band noise. Okay, that's a good sign. So what I'm going to do now is to transmit and uh, try and adjust the length of the antenna uh, starting at maximum length and try and adjust the length of the antenna so that the SWR comes down. The antenna gave a nice low SWR when it was fully extended uh, at the low end of the 20 meter band which is what you'd hope in fact so it didn't need any adjustment in this particular case. Bear in mind though that a low SWR is no indication of the, of the performance of the antenna it doesn't mean that it's going to radiate well. Of course, a dummy load, which would just be a perfect 50 ohm load, would give a fantastically low SWR, but wouldn't radiate at all. Uh, is this if you want to move uh, higher in frequency on, on this antenna, so for example, you want to go from the CW end of, of 20 meters, 14060 up to 14275 for example remember that as you go higher in frequency the wavelength gets shorter so you'll need to shorten this telescopic whip slightly and when you start to shorten it only do it a very small amount at a time and retest and you should start to see the SWR come down on your new frequency so the rem remember just do it a small amount at a time maybe a centimeter at a time takes a bit of practice once you get used to it you'll find it's quick and easy to do. My first very basic test with this antenna will just be to put out a call on uh, CW, a call CQ on CW and to look and see if the reverse beacon network spots me. Looking at the reverse beacon network, I was only spotted once uh, in Finland with a 10 dB signal to noise ratio. So that's not particularly encouraging. And uh, I think that would mean, tend to mean it would be quite difficult to make contacts. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is what I often do in a situation like this. I'm going to see if I can track down one or two SOTA stations on CW on 20 meters and see if I can contact them. Now bear in mind that uh, uh, you may not use CW, which is absolutely fine. Bear in mind that an antenna like this on SSB will require absolutely superb conditions, uh, radio conditions, for you to be able to make contacts. You're certainly not going to be having, having any long chats um, on an antenna like this, typically on SSB. But if you use data mode, you're actually going to do better than I like, I'm likely to be able to do on CW. So if you want to switch to FT4 or FT8, uh, then you'll find an antenna like this uh, will certainly work for you. It won't be great, but you will definitely make contacts. Anyway, let's see if I can make a contact on CW.
So that's HB9 AFI portable uh, in uh, Switzerland, worked 559 both ways. Not too bad. Time for a beer and then uh, discuss the results. Beer today, Brewdog Elvis Juice, a grapefruit infused IPA. Sounds a bit weird. Let's have a look at the strength. Uh, 5.1%, so a reasonably uh, heavy beer and grapefruit juice infused. Weird. Okay, let's give it a go. Mm, you can smell the grapefruit, and indeed you can taste it. Elvis juice. Somewhat bizarrely, grapefruit goes better with this beer than I thought it would. A good time to thank all those who bought me a beer over the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, I really do appreciate those beers, and uh, they keep me going, you know, guys. So uh, thanks a lot. Okay, uh, what have we learnt about the antenna? It does radiate. Uh, it's not very efficient, I, I think that's fair to say. No surprise there, uh, but it does work. I did make a contact. I'm sure if I'd have sat there for ages, I could have made more contacts. If I can make contacts on CW and you don't do CW, you could certainly make contacts on data. You'd do better on data than I would be likely to do on CW. So it's definitely a viable antenna. Uh, would I use this sort of antenna? Hard to say, there might be the occasional situation where an antenna like that would be useful. If you were using it to pedestrian mobile, as I mentioned, uh, mounted on top of a KX2, that could be uh, fun. But uh, it would be quite hard to do CW like that. And you'd need very good conditions, I think, to, to make SSB contacts. Uh, is it a useful antenna to have in your arsenal of antennas? Yeah, sure, why don't you get one? And uh, you know, something to have in the in the kit bag that you might use from time to time. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you find videos like this useful, uh, then do consider subscribing to the channel because I, I put stuff up all the time and uh, they'll cover a, a wide variety of different things. If you've got any questions uh, you want to ask, uh, then do put them in the comments below and I'll be pleased to reply to those. And of course, suggestions for future videos. So thanks again. Catch you later.